Hello, I'm Marc Allier and I'm going to present you uh, a quick presentation of the paper called Learner Privacy Appending Assignment with a little surprise at the end. Uh, the paper was written by me, Marc Allier, and with Charles Severance from the University of Michigan, Maria Jose Casagne, who works with me at the Polytechnical University of Catalonia, and Daniel Amo from the uh, University La Salle. So, the idea is that before the 2000s, the, before the, the web and the learning management systems, the students' data was on, on paper and was stored at the campus, and there was no problem whatsoever with learner privacy. And then around 2000, we started uh, having almost everywhere these learning management systems and academic information systems that were executed, were running in production in servers, uh, operated in the in the campus of the universities and the learning institutions. All were always under control. Learning, learning, pr learner privacy was okay also, but we had also, in addition to data, we had metadata. Usually this metadata was in the form of logs, in the, of log files in the learning management systems and servers, but we uh, had this data and it was inside the learning uh, institution, so th there was no problem with privacy. But uh, in this situation, what we had during the 2000s was that these learning management systems had to be updated every year, the code for security purposes, or because it was some kind of new feature, uh, you had to update it. Uh, if you had a, a vendor, a, a commercial vendor, you had to uh, update it. And sometimes uh, it was really hard to make this update. So we had this situation when there was this incentive to migrate because sometimes uh, other vendors would offer to migrate the data to for you to the new platform and we uh, so we have this uh, situation where we can see in the in the evolution of the market share of the learning management systems that in the in between the year 2000 and the year 2010 we have this fluid situation where uh, Several actors uh, fuse uh, in just one actor, uh, Blackboard, and two big, uh, one big actor appears in the Moodle, in the open source sector, uh, Moodle and Sakai also giving an example about how the, how the things have to be done, providing uh, a really uh, cool case examples. Dr. Chuck, uh, Charles Severance, our co-author, was really involved uh, leading the development of Sakai, for example. And then... Uh, so we, what we have is around 2007 is that we have again maybe diff a different learning management system in, campu in campus uh, and everything is fine by now. But then some things appear uh, because all the industry and, ac and academics, uh, the authors of the paper, uh, were really involved in, uh, in this, especially Charles and myself and Marie Jose. We were working in uh, interoperability, uh, working in the learning tools for interoperability, working with the Open Knowledge Initiative, working with Moodle to develop web services. So uh, it was uh, it's, it's when we have these situations when we can have tools from different uh, from different vendors ex being executed in the learning management system so we have this situation where now uh, uh, via a LTI tool or via uh, some kind of interoperability uh, with uh, wizard that you have done maybe not all your learning management system is executed in your campus and now we have uh, this situation where these standards have privacy uh, embedded into into them, but not always are is well implemented. So we don't know if we have good learner privacy. And then around 2010 is when we see we started to see infrastructure, infrastructure computers, in infrastructure going to the cloud. Ser whole server rooms, instead of buying and maintaining your uh, your servers, you could send them to the cloud, and it's cheaper and it's easier. But it's not only that; it's that using the model software as a service you could make not your servers but the whole learning management system and even the academic uh, information system go to the cloud and you just pay for use in a in a ready to use uh, uh, instance of software application somebody is using somebody is making all the hard choices and doing the heavy lifting and you don't need to do anything else uh, it's like okay now we uh, get rid of this burden of operating and evolving and and making 
all the all of this hard so choice uh, work of uh, updating every year the learning management system it's done outside we just pay we just pay for the use uh, we pay the same the costs uh, are not going down of course but it's less hard uh, it's less work and now uh, we know that the data of the students is going outside and at the same time we know that we have uh, uh, right now in the in the culture we are seeing books like the age of surveillance capitalism and surveillance capitalism is starting to become a thing and we have seen in the black mirror mm, things like the episode nosedive uh, where the social credit is an issue for freedom and from culture and recently just uh, before the paper was uh, accepted we saw the the social dilemma this new uh, netflix documentary that can of course be criticized, but it's uh, it's a signal that the the privacy is, is starting to be an issue for the society. And now we have under this situation where the universities and uh, learning institutions said Hakuna Matata sent learning data metadata to the cloud, and we also are sending the IT talent. And for the last three or four years. A lot of institutions have stopped operating their own learning management systems. They, the the personnel, uh, IT uh, crowd has forgotten how to develop and maintain these systems. And now we depend in this cloud uh, software as a service infrastructure. And now we have a real big problem in learning privacy we have to think about the standards we have to think about the systems that, that we use and we have to think within the models that we decide to use as an industry how to protect the data and the metadata of the students because right now in the paper we cite cases where this privacy is broken and from the other part we uh, in we have the, the researchers who are researching how to better exploit the data uh, of the students to do things and this and without considering that these things when done at scale in the whole culture culture is going to transform our society and we have to start to think about the consequences of our uh, goodwill uh, good willing research uh, so it's not uh, hakuna matata and to finish just uh, uh, I leave you with a little song that we thought of while thinking about this hakuna matata idea of letting uh, bringing everything to the cloud sorry if it's too informal for you hakuna matata all the data they take Hakuna Matata Go to a conference every year And go to a forum And fill a feature request It's a problem free Philosophy Hakuna Matata